Okay, I'll get up here anytime. Making the left on to Henry, Tom Henry. The rooftop of what used to be Henry's Garage offers incredible views of Lake Champlain and the Champlain Bridge. But a few weeks ago, on a warm October afternoon, filmmakers Bill Killen and Tom Henry were focused instead on this vintage Pontiac, slowly cruising the streets of Port Henry below. The car they're filming is almost identical to one owned by Marcus Stoddard, who worked as a mechanic at Henry's Garage for about a year before at age 19 enlisting with the Marines. It was during a trip home from boot camp before heading off to Vietnam, the co-workers gathered with Mark here in the garage to share a beer. Everybody took their beer and Mark took his, but instead of popping the top, he ran over, jumped up on the workbench, shimmied up a little electrical conduit and placed this beer can 12 feet up in the air on a steel girder and declared he would drink that when he got home from Vietnam. And that's where the can has been sitting for almost 50 years. That's because Marcus never made it home. He was killed in action in Vietnam in April of 1969. And even though Henry's Garage closed a few years later and the historic building became the village's fire station, the can was never touched. The fire department knew what it was. There were certain guys in the fire department that knew Mark and the story, and uh, no one bothered it. They understood what it represented. A longtime village employee shared the story with Fire Chief Jim Hughes a few years ago. He'd worked here many years, and he indeed uh, was familiar with the story, and he told me where I should look. And sure enough, there is a can of beer. Will it stay there? It's going to stay there, yes. Uh, the, word is, the word is out through the, the ranks of the members of the fire department and uh, those of the, the building is now owned by the town of Mariah. Um, that we intend uh, to protect and preserve that can you know, for, forever. Marcus was one of five young men from this small community who lost their lives in Vietnam. The filmmakers say their documentary is a tribute to all five. There were five that we lost, all of them really, really good boys. Yes. So this is to all of them? This is to all of them. Yep, a very, very sad time in our history. Debbie and Tom's grandfathers were brothers who opened the garage in the early 1900s. It's a good way, I think, to not only pass the story of Vietnam down through the community who is still grappling with this loss of five people. And many people we've run into can still tell you the names of all five soldiers that died in this town. And that's been half a century. And many remember them all with a lot of affection and respect. Mike Stoddard is Marcus's younger brother. That's a, like a monument, as if it was uh, put on the lawn out there with his name in it and, bra and on a brass plate. You know, everybody knows what it is and they respect it. Bill, we're going to go this way, right? This way, yeah. Filmmakers Bill Killen and Tom Henry, who produced a documentary on famed Adirondack surveyor Verplank Colvin, have teamed up again to tell the story of this young soldier's sacrifice and what has become a grateful community's lasting memorial. This one just hit us and that was it. And one email and that was and that was it. He truly uh, gave his life for his, for his country and for his principles. The film will include a soundtrack written and produced by musicians Mark Wetmiller and Mark Boucher, who live just across the lake in Vermont. After hearing the story behind the film, they headed right to the studio to write and record the title track. And we, based on the stories that Tom had told, us, told about us about this this, this whole movie thing, and Marcus Stoddard, uh, we developed this connection. And in, uh, of course, two and a half hours. The story is a songwriter's dream, right? I mean, the can being up there, you know, just to hold the hold the, 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 the untapped potential of the situation, you know? It's just infused with all sorts of soulful meaning. So for us, it spoke to us, you know, we just the lyrics just... It just, we couldn't write, couldn't write on the legal pack fast enough to keep up, and we were able to establish direct connections uh, with the story. 
two even stopped by the garage recently to see the beer can for themselves. So uh, Tom uh, is actually in uh, a band with the musicians and they happen to do uh, music that sounds like it's from the 60s and uh, they're generous enough to allow us to use the music on the film and write, write the uh, theme song, I guess you could call it, for the film. We never recovered. And on the heels of Ken Burns' miniseries this fall on PBS, Debbie says the timing is right to share the stories of these young soldiers and their sacrifice for their community and nation. I don't remember vividly some of the details. It was such an eye-opener for me to see that. And Mark's story meant so much more after seeing that series. Debbie's parents knew Mark intimately. He was like a son to them. They were devastated when they heard the news that he'd been killed. I'm getting that, fe that feeling as we're putting this together in the community that Mark was a strong part of the community, well, highly respected, well-liked, beloved son, brother, but also part of the Garage family. So I think as a Henry that it's, it's a fitting tribute to be part of this and I'm, I'm happy to be part of this. Veterans Coming Home is made possible with support from Casella Resource Solutions and the Cloud Splitter Foundation.